so today's um, webinar is again for um, those who are uh, wanting to support their new arrivals or ELL job seekers. So um, this slide, again, I will show at the end of the presentation. It has my uh, email and um, address. This is where I work currently at San Juan Adult Education, Citrus Heights, California. And it is in the Sacramento, what they call the East Bay area. And after this presentation, we'll take questions. But also, I want you to remember uh, that I'm more than willing to help anyone uh, with any resources or questions. Uh, you can email me directly, and I'll be glad to answer that those questions. So um, this is supposed to be a suitcase, a word cloud, and it's a reminder to us that our ELL um, students and job seekers come with lots of challenges. And um, their goal usually is to succeed for their family. And some of us forget that they need, they want to save face back home. They've come to this new country, so they have a lot to um, expectations, family and friends at home, uh, to live up to. And so they face challenges such as the American lifestyle. Um, for, for us, most of our, um, our students are Afghan right now, Afghani, uh, some Iraqi, some Iranian, uh, but for the most part, we have the special immigrant visa holders from Afghanistan that formerly worked with the uh, US Corps Army of Engineers. Uh, back in Afghanistan. So they don't have furniture. Uh, they they live in the apartments with their beds on the floor. Uh, they don't have cars. They walk to class. Um, if there's a car, it's one, one car for the family. Um, they are also getting used to phones, uh, technology, how to use their phones to communicate with teachers um, and their um, student, their own children that, that are students in the school system. Uh, and so they don't really know how to use email like we Americans take for granted that we communicate with our uh, children's teachers uh, via apps and email. And a lot of things are done on our telephones. Um, so they also have to conform to the American dress style. Uh, and they are used to the women. They walk around still wearing their head coverings, their hijab. And uh, men don't really have the suit and tie um, custom, so they have to get used to that. And in our interview workshops, we remind them of how to go dressed uh, to, to workshops. And I do have an example uh, to share with you of one student who her husband, she one time dressed wearing her head scarf covering, but with um, Western clothing. And her husband asked her, why are you wearing that? And she said, well, I'm working in an American school. Uh, and she, she's one of our students that became an instructional assistant with us. And she said, I have to dress like, like they do. So that's uh, just a little anecdote for you. So again, all of these are challenges that our, our students face that we don't really consider and just don't think of. OK, and uh, my locations where I work, I have a little bit of a challenge. I, I have two main school campuses, and I also work at a job center. It's a uh, local job center. It's considered one of America's job centers of California. And I think all over the US, they're supposed to be, and they're called America's job centers. Um, this one in particular that I work at is a Hillsdale Job Center. Uh, it's in Sacramento. I also have, so I have three desks <laughs> or three office spaces that I work at. So it's a, a bit of a challenge to juggle right now. But nevertheless, um, I still continue to my work with a passion. And um, some of my responsibilities are uh, to communicate uh, local job search information to students. And uh, I also connect students to job coaches and job centers. And I give personalized ass assistance to uh, students for um, career preparation and to find jobs. Uh, and just a little anecdote there, in this last eight months, I have seen 100 plus students. 23 of these are ELL Navigator clients, and um, they I meet them multiple times. I, I have to, under a uh, grant that our school district received from a local employment training agency, I have to monitor uh, eight, uh, 20, 20 students, but I have 23 uh, throughout 18 months. So that's uh, the ELL Navigator, and there are other uh, states 
and programs that also have this grant, and some of you might be familiar with it. So um, part of my job to, is to inform my students about my services and about jobs and how to search for them. So in the beginning of the year, I visit classrooms and I explain my services. I give a slideshow presentation, and our students are various levels. They're from beginning low ESL, so that means that they know how to um, answer a few questions, the who, what, where, when, and why questions. So I do have a PowerPoint presentation, and, and that's how, uh, what I do for the lower level ESL classes. I, I use those questions um, to answer and to present my information. I also do follow-up students, uh, follow, excuse me, follow-up visits to train students, uh, and that is a, um, a strategy also that I use to keep students uh, informed by using the Remind and Padlet apps. And uh, Remind is a uh, classroom management system, and Padlet, it's also new in the classrooms. It's more project-based learning. And I'll have an example a little later on about how I use Padlet for job search and how I've used it uh, prior to this position that I, I'm in right now. Uh, Remind uh, is something that I use. It's the students understand that they are members in a cl class, uh, but the class is just to give them information about where the jobs are. Uh, I also use the app to remind uh, students about career fairs and other events. Uh, and this is just a small this is just a small um, reminder here and a, a, um, a, an, a handout and you can come back to this. I understand that this uh, webinar is going this PowerPoint will be available made available to you. so you can come back to this but it's just a, a quick, a show of um, what I use in the classrooms. I give this handout, and it's scripted. It tells the students how to join the, this Remind page that I use for informing them. And then the Padlet uh, is where they go. They just click on a link, enter a password, and um, they find out where the local jobs and job fairs are. So um, the Padlet page, I I started using that because as the career transition specialist in our school district, I receive tons of flyers and information about jobs and um, career fairs, and I don't want to inundate the teachers' in mailboxes with all of these flyers, because sooner or later they stop looking at them. So I, I decided to use this Padlet page, which I had been formerly using for my classroom, so I decided, oh, this would be a good place where people, teachers and students alike, can go and find out what's happening in the job search field. Yeah. And so here's just a, a quick glance at um, what it's like when they first go to, to enter, uh, to join. They can join Remind on the internet, as, so they can just use a computer, or they can use their phones. So this is an example here of signing up. Um, on the internet. And again, that little flyer that I just showed you previously, that shows instructions for computer and telephone access, how to join. And uh, an example here of on Remind, uh, how I inform students. And you can see here up at the top, um, there's the web page address, uh, and the balance.com happens to be one of the resources that my go-to resources that I um, use a lot for resume prep, uh, interview tips, and the like. Uh, and as you can see down here, uh, there's a job, a job fair. Job fairs is one of the primary uh, uses that I um, use Remind for. Yeah. So down here too, you can see the text. It says text 810 and enter this message. So earlier you saw the computer login, and here is how to uh, log in with your telephone, how to join the class. And uh, for Padlet, it's very simple, and I try to remember 
remember that I should keep things simple for ELL learners. They have enough, that briefcase that I showed you earlier, the word cloud, they have enough on their minds. So I try to keep anything that I uh, do technology-wise for them simple. And so here I uh, took my web page, uh, the address for this page, and went to uh, bitly.com and shortened the URL so that it's easy to remember. You can see the address, uh, SAC jobs, and the password SAC jobs. Uh, and also, you don't have to have a password. You can keep this page public, I believe. And um, just with the URL address, they can uh, access, and it just opens directly to the page resource. So just something to keep in mind. I have a password, and uh, thinking maybe next year I will take that off for one less step that they need uh, to access this information. And so um, here is an example of that Padlet page, and you can see at the top um, that these are just like little photos or postings, like a bulletin board, actually. And I keep these updated to, I, I actually use a, use a volunteer student uh, to help me do that. As a student that was a, a class former, so she's a former student, and she's uh, currently in uh, Taiwan. She comes and goes, her children are here uh, in the States, in California studying, but she's, they were born here, so, and she's on a, a tourist visa, so she decided, I could, I could do this back in Taiwan too. Can I help you? And so she goes in and she takes down any um, expired job postings for me. And so that's a tip there for how you could use your um, volunteers. And um, when I post jobs, I try to remember to post jobs because I, I get jo job postings that are applicable for all uh, students, all applicants, ASE, uh, that's adult secondary education, adult basic education, and um, also jobs for professionals. I've received jobs come through for immigration lawyers and uh, the like. We do have, again, uh, special immigrant visa holders, and they are very um, high-level English. They, ha they come with um, engineering experience, but the challenge is that they are not certified with their um, credentials here in the U.S., so they can't. Uh, it's a challenge to get them back into their field, uh, and it takes will take them years um, to become the engineers that uh, they were back in their countries. So I try to remember that although they're very high level, it's it's going to be a while before they get the training, go back to school, or they get the opportunities to to work like they once did in their own countries. So these are some of the jobs that I recommend uh, to them, uh, jobs that they can uh, get without difficulties. So interpreter jobs. Um, there are companies, many companies, I think about uh, 10 years ago um, when we had a very poor down down economy and the economic bust there in 2008 through 10 uh, there were two interpreter companies that i could think of it locally and now there must be 10 or 15 so it's a big opportunity right now there are many uh, companies looking for employees and i have animal control there because um, they do need people with languages to come into those new neighborhoods. We have a neighborhood here that our students and staff refer to as Little, Af Little Afghanistan because there are so many um, people that live there, you know, in the language that speak Dari or Farsi. And so they have pets too, just like we do. And um, they, animal control needs somebody to go in and, and talk to them when things get out of hand. Law enforcement uses interpreters too because they, um, when they go to these homes, um, the Middle Eastern customs, the women cannot speak to a man. So a police officer is always accompanied by another female uh, police officer and um, they use also an interpreter um, to help address the situations. 
So they can get jobs in school districts. And earlier I said one of our, my former students, in fact, uh, is an I, instructional aide with us. Well, school district jobs, in, in our school district, we have this year alone resettled. Uh, we have 900 families that settled in the area that uh, have come into our school districts. And so they are hiring recreational aides, instructional aides that can go into the classrooms uh, to address the needs of these um, bilingual students that uh, don't have a high English level. Um, also, there are uh, community services like nonprofit organizations that hire um, part-time, usually, um, interpreters. Um, the library currently has a, a position for an Arab speaker that helps uh, clients and the community and our students to to um, use their services. They give them an introduction to the library. They help them navigate all kinds of library services. Uh, and uh, I have re recommended that they do a Farsi one because it is a very big uh, population here that speaks that language. So nonprofit and resettlement agencies also um, hire our students. And um, Resettlement agencies like World Relief. I understand I spoke to a former student who works there as a warehouse manager. I was trying to uh, see if we could get some volunteer positions there. And um, he told me they have 600 volunteers there. So uh, I'll speak a little bit more about volunteers at the end of the, this presentation, if anybody's interested. And um, Padlet, this is just a quick page to show you. Um, what I used Padlet for in my class prior to becoming a career transition specialist, uh, which, by the way, is a new assignment for me as of last fall. So my students, I encouraged them. Uh, they were looking for jobs. At the time, I was teaching a career uh, English class with uh, using Burlington as our curriculum. And I encouraged my students to uh, do PowerPoints, that they could use as a portfolio for uh, job seeking. In the next slide, I will show you uh, um, one of the methods that I use for keeping track of um, how how many people actually go to my pages. How do I know who is uh, looking, whether it's, it's um, worth it or not for me to continue uh, putting articles up from the internet for my students to to read, or for our, our clients, because not all of these are, are my students, of course. Uh, I actually serve the two main campuses I told you about, and some former students come back to us as well, and I do help them. Um, but I know that they're being read because I use um, bit, bitly.com. Uh, you can shorten your URL with Google or Tiny URL, but bitly keeps track and it provides infographics. So here you can see on May 9th, I um, posted this article, Tesla Recruiter uh, shares strategies to land a job because I had a former student that was uh, is doing a temp job for, with them for a couple of months. And so I thought, well, he would be interested in finding out some strategies for, for getting a permanent job. And so uh, you can see there that there were 16 uh, clicks on that day when I posted that uh, that article. Okay, uh, and also I, I use Bitly for you can see at the bottom here it says Cal Jobs Calendar and Hillsdale Events. Uh, Cal Jobs is an app that they uh, it's a web page. It's connected with it's the state web page for employment and it's connected with the Employment Development Department, um, which uh, a lot of uh, the clients use to look for jobs if they are unemployed. So uh, in Hillsdale, that's the center that I told you that I um, work at uh, two mornings a week, and uh, it's nice the, for students to know that I'm at this center. Uh, and I post their events, I post their calendar also. And these 
um, links here are for articles that I post on a um, on Remind, not on Padlet. So these are all articles that they just click a link and it takes them straight to these articles. And again, a little bit of some more infographics, uh, which is nice if you need to uh, report back to your uh, admin uh, what you're doing, you can show them uh, you're, you're keeping track of uh, your um, clients or students and um, how they are responding to your efforts. So here again, you can see that I made that, I uh, posted this article from Tesla on May 9th, and by May 13th, um, 16 people have had viewed it. So three or four days later, um, 16 people had already seen it. And you can see by the bar graph here too, um, the attendance, okay? So I like that about Bitly. And um, just to keep in mind, some of the strategies that I use to ease the, uh, the tech learning curve for our students. So I use screenshots and uh, I use the slip snipping tool, Microsoft snipping tool. I know there are other apps out there and methods for um, taking screenshots, but I use a snipping tool and it's fairly easy for me. And it's right on my taskbar there, so I find something, I just uh, take a screenshot. And then it's easy to post on Padlet or Remind. Um, okay, so you see here, Remind has a character number maximum, and I think it's something like 30, 30 or 40, I can't remember. Um, but it's also a reminder to me that I have to simplify what I'm saying to my readers. So because of that um, character um, re requirement, the numbers, it's, it's good for me. Um, I keep it simple. And um, again, I, like I said earlier, Padlet, it's a link that doesn't require a password, uh, but I use one. Um, and uh, another reminder, the strategy I use is to uh, use apps that are accessible from a mobile phone or a text messaging platform uh, that relates information fast. So from an iPhone, you can upload f flyer flyers, like the job flyers that I get from agencies from our employment training agencies and or you can upload doc document images immediately um, and I use I uh, use Outlook for our mail app at work in, in the school district and so I find it very easy and convenient to just I click on that flyer or that document and um, I copy it I have the remind in Padlet pages open on another screen, and I just copy it over. So it's very easy from Outlook. Or I um, on the phone, it's very easy from the phone too. I recommend an iPhone for that. Um, so here's just an example of the snipping tool. So when I give students information about applying for jobs, I don't just tell them there's a job here. I also try to give them information and show them how to navigate uh, that job uh, application source. So here you can see that I I copied um, I copied a, I took a screenshot here um, that they can see where the location is. Um, for, at that time, I was looking for warehouse openings in Sacramento, and so I showed this. I sent this to a student so that they could see uh, where how to use um, that web page uh, resource. Also uh, another strategy to ease some of that tech anxiousness when they're applying for jobs is to provide uh, instructions and I used here um, to make these arrows uh, I used the snipping tool um, before posting it. This is really tiny these boxes as you can see here and it's not easy. So what's obvious to us, okay, we're looking for it and we can find it, but they may not be able to see it as readily. So it's nice to point out um, 
those uh, uh, little items that seem very obvious to us. And also I give them instructions uh, and I will make screenshots of the instructions as well, like I did right here. I just uh, did a little snippet. And, I, and that's information that I send out to on Remind or I email it to the students as well. So an example too of taking a screenshot is here. Um, this is on my uh, on Padlet. A former student used Padlet uh, to show their talent or their skills in computers. For um, this was to reduce the uh, sensitivity of the um, mouse, and so he's showing in the screenshot here uh, that it's a, so it's a tutorial and. These are uh, good ideas for using um, um, Padlet. You can upload your students' presentations. And um, I actually started doing this. The, the idea came to me because I had students who maybe couldn't attend on the day that there was a presentation in class. So this way, if I posted it on Padlet and they couldn't attend class, they could see that presentation. And then I also um, did, um, and I'm trying to recall here, what I did, they um, commented. So I made a, oh yes, I made a Google uh, form for students to comment on presentations. So if a student had not attended class that day, they could still comment on a student's presentations. And so that's another idea for how to use Padlet. Okay, um, here, so now I'm getting down towards, this is about the middle of my uh, presentation here, and I use, the, these are web resources um, for careers and jobs, and these are two that I use, California Career Zone and OneNet or uh, onetonline.org. Line always confuses me how to pronounce that, but it's onetonline.org. And uh, in the next slide here, I'll show you. So I like this web page. I'm not sure what you know you're using in your states, uh, but if I'm sure, I think every state should have a, a resource page like this. This resource page allows um, you uh, job seekers to explore the job industries, and it also gives an assessment of their personality styles and what kind of a job might fit best for that. Uh, personality and they have two on this assessment there are two kinds one is uh, very uh, short and one is uh, a longer so they have two versions and in this next slide here I'll show you that they show the occupational clusters so it is very user-friendly especially for our ELL students they can see the pictures and they can make the connection uh, so they just click on an occupational cluster and then they can click on and see the job title. So here it's building and construction trades. And what's nice here um, that they can choose the occupation by highest paying, fastest growing, or most employed. And so uh, in this choice here, I, I did another screenshot here. I just chose the electrical engineers. This little drawing here is to show that it's a STEM occupation. It's, uh, it requires four years of education, and this is the annual uh, average wage for an electrical engineer. Um, in uh, these are this, these are statistics that come from the Department of Labor. Also, uh, when they click on that link, electrical engineer, they get a lot of information. They get um, here what other jobs are related in that field that they could look for uh, and they also get a video a video of one example of an electrical engineer position and I've highlighted down here where it says find job openings because uh, they can click on this and it takes them straight to job openings they can apply for so that's really nice it's uh, almost like a one-stop shop here find a job find a career and then look for a job. You can, they can find training. They can also find schools that 
have that co uh, coursework for them to study. And here is another bit of information from that same page. It's chock full, this page. This is only a little bit of what's on that page. Um, and so a description of what the job is, uh, which in their country might be very different than what it is in the US. Some of the things that are listed here, they might not have any experience with, but now they know that if that's what they need for that job, that they should maybe go to college, a community college or an adult education program and get some, some of this, uh, these skills to, before they apply for jobs to make them more competitive. And uh, okay, again on the right here, uh, gives you more information about wages, preparation, and the outlook. So um, in California, and I believe a lot of these this information is for, for California because it is CaliforniaCareerZone.org. And uh, this is the average annual growth. So they see that it's probably going to be competitive because of the slow growth. So here I've um, thought, OK, I've given you uh, resources, uh, applications, and computer apps, telephone apps on uh, how you can keep your ELL job seeker informed, um, but here are some internet resources for your classes. Uh, they are career preparation, uh, ESL classes, Burlington English, I have a dollar sign here because it's not free, but it is a wonderful program. I've used it in my career English class, uh, and they are making um, classes and courses in there more every Every time, just recently, I, I saw them, and they have I saw them at a uh, job fair, and they have now digital literacy skills. So Burlington English was for like beginning high students and above, and now they're they have uh, lower they have a literacy level as well. With the upper levels, uh, beginning high and above, Burlington English is nice because there are there's vocabulary lists, so they could, for example, study um, bartending or um, daycare vocabulary, up all the way up to accounting careers, um, more spe more English specific uh, careers. And I've put down here uh, CDLP online. That one is a uh, California Distance Learning Project Online. Uh, that's a web page that used uh, former news stories and turned them into uh, sort of uh, like a class almost. A lot of teachers in our school at our program use this uh, page. It has uh, reading, follow along reading, listening, and it had also videos, but it's it's kind of dated, so they, they've um, taken down, I believe, the videos. And so right now, you can just see the stories and uh, lots of activities, like word uh, matching, uh, concentration, dictation, writing. And students can email their teachers the uh, work that they've done from that uh, program. Below, I have two other uh, pages, resources. AmericanEnglish.state.gov. Uh, that's one of my favorites. And in the next uh, slide, I'll show you a screenshot of what I just discovered uh, the other day. It gets better and better uh, all the time, too, that page. Owl.English.Purdue is one of my favorites for grammar and um, English, um, English as a second language students. This page is nice because it it addresses both the native English speaker and the English as a second language speak, uh, student. So they can find the tab on the left-hand side for ESL, and that just makes it you know, in simpler English for them. But the activities are very high level. It's for your college student uh, ready, ready to go to college or community college. So here's a snapshot of that American English page that I uh, just recently discovered. And if you click on that tab, Resources, you will come up with this, Web Resources for English Language Teaching and Learning. Down below here, Text PDF, you just click on this and you can upload it. And I was very um, surprised, but also glad to see a lot of 
the uh, web page references here are ones that I like and owl.purdue is on there. So non-techie resources. So um, away from technology, I just thought I'd share this with you. For the ELL job seeker, um, maybe uh, have job fairs. I organize a job fair e each semester this year. It takes a lot of prep time. It took me maybe about a month on top you know, along with doing the rest of my job, uh, everything that I do, it took about a month to solidify and organizing a job fair. So, um, at, so at the job, and uh, I also go to job fairs, and those I post on um, Padlet job fair flyers, or I remind students about job fairs on Remind. I attend some of those job fairs, and I tell them that the students that I will meet them there. I tell them, uh, tell their teachers, I send an email reminder and I say, tell them to look for the lady wearing the red sweater. <laughs> that way they can identify me and uh, I can help them if they have any questions to confirm what they might have understood while they were talking to an employer. So um, mini hire events, I, I host those here at our school and I might pick one or two employers. So as an example, I had a, a um, a day for home health care, which is big here in, uh, right now in Sacramento. There are a lot of home health care agencies and not a whole lot of experience is required. Um, so one day I had two home health care agencies and that was just a, uh, an example of a mini hire event. Volunteer fairs, I am organizing one this summer. So again, if um, there's anybody who's interested and has a question at the end here, I'm more than happy to provide information. Job center field trips. So I took our campuses, the two campuses, we took school buses and I took students there and they were really um, very impressed by what's available to them at a, at a job center. So it's different from telling a student, okay, there's a job center over here and meet me there. But if you actually take them there, by arranging a field trip, I think you get more of a response. And uh, this week, last week we had a, a field trip and uh, this week I will be going back to one of those classrooms where I had recruited students. The teacher wants me to come and help with online uh, training for the students to open Cal Jobs accounts. And I spoke about that earlier. Um, career days. Okay, so you can have uh, in-school presentations. So one of my home health care uh, vendors, I invite them to our to one of our, we have satellite locations. Uh, at, at elementary schools, we have teachers that give classes as well, ESL classes, and they're mostly low-level literacy or they're multi-level, but they're not higher than maybe an intermediate low-level. And their students are usually moms who's, um, children attend those schools. So I uh, invited one of the home health care agencies to come and give a, a little presentation to the moms who were very interested in this kind of a job since it doesn't require uh, much in terms of um, education. Uh, it, they, this one company just required that they had experience taking care of a family member. And uh, workshops. So in California, and I'm not sure if it's across the states here, but there's a new world of work curriculum that they're using at the community college and four-year colleges. Um, so next year, I, I attended the training this year, and so in the fall, I expect to uh, hold a workshop or two per month for our students, and those workshops are uh, anywhere from uh, how to present yourself at an interview, things to do and not to do. Um, also, uh, internet um, uh, use, uh, privacy and um, a copyright usage is one of the workshop workshops. Resume critiquing, interview practice, that's uh, one of the workshops that um, that we provide that I've provided in the uh, beginning of the school year. Uh, this year I was only able to, to do two of those uh, workshops, but I used 
uh, my volunteers. I had four volunteers and about 15 attendees, and each volunteer had three uh, people to, to help, and there were like three stations opening up a, an email account with Yahoo or, or Gmail was one station. Another station was uh, resume uh, critiquing. And I trained the volunteers prior to this and showed them um, what was required at each, at each station. So, um, okay, so I, I going down, down to my last two slides here. And this is just a uh, slide um, that I thought I'd share. Um, Eventbrite is a an event organizer here, uh, and you can see uh, last week I um, attended this webinar, uh, excuse me, this uh, workshop, and I told my students that I would be there. Uh, you can see here, but it says diversity career uh, group, uh, so it was it was considered a, a um, career career and job fair, but it had diversity um, written on it as well. Um, and so I attended this event and told the students, I emailed the teachers and I told them, please tell the students that I'll be there and to look for me. And I've also recommended to our teachers to show the students how to reserve a spot on Eventbrite to go to this career fair, because technology is something that we use every day more and more. And so this is a skill that's important. And um, as part of that event, Bright, if you join, uh, they open up accounts, they send you emails reminding you uh, of the event, the day of, the day before. And they also show you, send you emails with other events that are happening in the area that might interest you. So, so you don't have to go to the event, Bright, and to their web page and look all the time. They email you and send you things that are um, available too, based on what you've already uh, subscribed for, what you've already um, showed, shown interest for. And that is the end of my uh, presentation. Um, here's my uh, information, my email.